This is in reply to somebody's comment. <clears throat> but Hillary also supports war against Iran and mass deportations, and she does, uh, along with the TPP and NAFTA. The wall is never getting built, and... Did you know that Clinton supports a constitutional amendment to limit abortion access? Did you know that? Most people don't know that. I think most leftists would have to concede that Trump is the lesser evil on foreign policy. He actually seems to be an isolationist. And seems to want to dismantle the empire. Whereas Hillary is truly a bellicose interventionist. That will no doubt launch at least three unnecessary wars. We got one in Syria already coming up. And just flat out better on trade. Trump is just flat out better on trade. His positions on trade and foreign policy are legitimately closer to Sanders's, although nowhere near as appealing. Where Trump is really scary is his fiscal policy. I don't think he's going to punish anybody for getting an abortion. I do think he'll probably bankrupt the country, which is why you should probably expect Hillary to run to the right of Trump. While Clinton may demolish him in a two-way race, it's going to be by winning red states, like Utah. And maybe North Carolina. Although North Carolina is kind of purplish nowadays. But you get the point. I think Missouri is another state that she could probably win. Okay, And by being more appealing to conservatives than Trump is. So Clinton wins 40 states, sure. And she probably will. But the result is that even, moder even the moderate left ends up disenfranchised. So, sure. Clinton will win in a landslide. I think everybody can see that. And it's going to be because Trump is... I, I don't think Trump will hit 40. I, I think he'll probably have a hard time hitting 35. Okay? It's going to be uh, just a... It's going to blow him away. But the election is between the... Somebody who's a conservative and somebody who really doesn't make any sense. Okay? Um... The, the, there's no left in this election. And as I've been trying to point out, there is an argument that the left may actually be Trump. Okay? Clinton may be the right. Well, Clinton is the right in this election. What's unclear is whether Trump is the left or not. Okay? But the way, the way these things work is that, I mean, it's not, it's not going to flip. Okay? The, the left is not going to vote for Trump. But the right may vote for Clinton. I think. I mean, it, there's a lot of factors in that, but you can expect that, right? I think he needs to wait until at least July to decide. But I actually don't think that Sanders really has a choice. If he doesn't run, what is going to happen is that Jill Stein is going to show up on the map in a big way. I share the author's view that Sanders will win a three-way race, as Clinton essentially pushes Trump out of the spectrum and becomes the Republican nominee. But Stein cannot win. Not from where she is. So if he doesn't run, Stein could very well split the vote badly enough to screw things up. And I'm going to expand on this. Okay. To put it another way, somebody is going to run to the left of Clinton. Okay. It's not going to be a two-way race. Somebody will run to the left of Clinton. In fact, we know that Stein is running to the left of Clinton. And with all of the support that Sanders has worked up, she will pick up a substantial amount of it, okay? So that person, whoever it is, is going to generate significant support. The real question is whether that person is, and we have three options here, either that person might not be a factor, so you could see something like Clinton 55, Trump 35, and Stein 10. If so... That's a big boost for the third party. It's been a long time since we had a third party with 10%. I think probably it hasn't happened since Ross Perot. It'll probably happen this election. And then Clinton wins anyways. Right? But you're looking at a 65-35 split. Right? If you want to think of Clinton as the left in some way. Even though it doesn't, it's not in any way accurate. Right? Um, or... If the second option is that it's enough of a factor to split. Then you get something like Clinton 45, Trump 35, and Stein 20. But the way that that would work out is that the electoral collage would be very kind to Trump. You could end up with some very weird results if you end up with something like that, right? 
where would Stein do well? Well, Stein would probably do well in California. So could Trump win California? Well, if Stein splits the vote, he might. But then Clinton might win in Missouri and Utah and the Carolinas. And then Trump ends up winning in Illinois because Stein splits the vote. Right? So, so you end up with these very strange results. And nobody really gets what they wanted. But that's what happens when the nominally left-of-center party runs somebody who is arguably to the right of the right-wing party's nominee. If that's the result, you should not blame Jill Stein, and you should not blame voters. You should blame Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party. And it would be the reverse of the Perot scenario that elected Clinton. You'd end up with Trump winning. He would probably lose the, the popular vote by a substantial margin, and yet still manage to win because of where Stein's support would be um, localized. Right? Stein, Stein would, like, when, when, when I say Stein, gets 20%. That's national. She'd get, like, nothing in, in, in the Midwest, right? But she'd get higher than that. would get, like, 30, 35 in, on, on the West Coast. And higher than that in parts of the East Coast as well, right? Or it could be enough to actually win. And Stein will not win. But if Sanders runs as an independent, you could get something like Clinton with 25, Trump with 35, and Sanders with 38, and then Stein with 2. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is going on me there. Um, now, I want to point out that I've kept Trump at 35 all the way through. That's probably inaccurate. Um, if Sanders runs as an independent, Clinton will probably eat into Trump's vote by swinging to the right. Um, it's gonna, I mean, she, she can't destroy her credibility any more than she already has. Um, she'll just spin on a dime anyways. And... All of a sudden, you'll have Clinton going after Trump's base, like, really hard, and she will in eat into it. In fact, the results will probably look the other way around, right? It'll be more like Trump 25, Clinton 35, Sanders 38. Trump will be essentially pushed out of the spectrum as nothing more than a fringe candidate, Clinton will become the Republican candidate, and Sanders will become the Democratic nominee. But whereas Sanders will be able to get most of the Democratic support, Clinton will not be able to get most of the Republican support. And that's why she'll lose, right? It, it, it's a complete disaster from, you know, from, from the establishment's perspective. Um, but I actually think that'll happen, or is more likely to happen than what I actually wrote down here. It's just that I wanted to keep Trump stable um, at around 35, um, just to demonstrate the point. That, um, because I mean, what, what I'm what I'm measuring here is the effect of a third party candidate. So you want to control um, for for Trump, right? Um, even though I don't think that's what will actually happen, right? So it ought to be a very delicate decision. It ought to be made at the very last minute. And if three is actually made to prevent two, if we get to August and Stein is running at 10 or 15% in the national polls, then what he's actually doing is unsplitting the vote. The reality is that I don't think you can put Sanders back on the tube. His supporters are going to be looking for another option. And right now, the most likely option is Jill Stein. Okay, so what am I getting across here? I'm getting across the idea here that somebody is going to run on the left and they're going to be a, a, a factor. And that's what Bernie has created. I don't know if he meant to create it, right? This might be blowback, right? I don't know. I, like I say, I, I've been over this a few times. I think he's angling for a run as an independent. Okay, if he's not, or, okay, let's take a step back. 
Um, I, I was talking about this around the Arizona. There's one of two possibilities, right? Either this is all just a ploy to get people to vote for Hillary Clinton, or he's planning on running as an independent, right? Those are the two options. The idea that he ever thought he could ever really seriously win the Democratic nomination is not really serious. You can't really take that seriously, right? And he had to have known that. So those are his two, th those are the two real possibilities, okay? Either he's actually working for Clinton and trying to, to increase um, participation, and he has stated on more than one occasion um, that he might be. Um, he, he, there are many, many quotes from Bernie Sanders that would back up that, that, that perspective, okay? There are also many, many quotes from Bernie Sanders that would back up the perspective that this is all just politics, um, and he's actually using the Democratic Party as a vehicle to generate um, uh, exposure for himself um, uh, with the plan the plan all along was to run as an independent, right? Now, I know that, that um, you have to read into the statements to get that point, whereas, you know, for example, Jane Sanders, Sanders has stated point blank, we're not going to run as an independent, um, and if that's the case, then this is all just a big, giant sham, right? He's just another just another Clinton operative, and he's just working people up to vote for Clinton in the end, right? The thing is that if that's the case, that will fail. Because um, nobody that he's brought into the process, none of these new voters, independent voters, young voters, none of them are going to vote for Clinton, okay? If they decide to vote at all, they're going to vote for somebody like Jill Stein, okay? That's an inevitability. Okay, so it's not a question of, you know, uh, maintaining a two-party system. That's already a, that, that's already out the window. Okay, <coughs> there is going to be a third party in this election. The question is really whether or not it's one of these three options, right? And you're going to have a hard time... I, I've been spending a lot of time arguing that, that the Cruz campaign doesn't get the math. People behind Cruz are idiots. You know, Cruz himself is a dipshit. You know, they're never going to figure this out. And in the end, that turned out to be right. They, they, they didn't figure it out. Even when they tried to figure it out, they fucked up, right? I think you're going to end up with the same kind of issue around Hillary. If we get to that point in August where all of a sudden um, Jill Stein is running at 15 or 20 percent, right? They're not going to be able to understand that unless Sanders runs, Trump will win. They're going to be locked into their two-party thinking um, and frankly into their, you know, their, their, their neoliberal, you know, Ultra competitive mindset. Um, I, Clinton's not that different than Cruz um, regarding her perspective of capitalism. Um, they're both very much um, tied to the idea of, of competing, you know, of fighting, you know, one on one, the whole thing, right? Um, again, a lot of people are going to be surprised by that, but that's why Hillary overcompensates consistently because she has this perception that everybody's sexist everybody's nobody's gonna take her seriously because she's a female so she overcompensates for it right she's that much more bellicose she's that much more competitive that much more violent in order to um uh again i'm gonna use the word overcompensate for her for her perceptions of other people's perceptions of her And it's going to be very hard if we get to that point to convince her, okay, there's a movement growing up to your left. You may have won the Democratic primary, but you're going to lose the election. Now, we're a long ways from, from being there, okay? We could very well end up with, 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 with the first option. In fact, you know, 
I want to talk chances and probability. I, I haven't crashed any numbers, but it is intuitively obvious. Okay, I don't even know how you would crunch, you know, how you would quantify it. Okay, but you know, e even if I'm talking in a in a colloquial sense, okay, the mo the, the first option is by far the most likely one. Okay, if Jill Stein can get to ten percent, that's massive, right? That's a huge, huge, huge boost. And Clinton probably still wins. But there's this idea of a tipping point, right? Where critical mass kind of comes up. And that tipping point may be somewhere around 10%. Meaning that whether... She, you know, like, she, she only needs to get to whatever it is, you know, 11%, 12%, and then the floodgates open, right? And then overnight, you see her go from, you know, 10% to 25%. But the flow side of that is that there's also a, there's a maximum point there, too, right? There's just not enough time for Stein to get enough votes to win. There is enough time for Stein to get enough votes to split. And if that happens, the only solution is for Sanders to come in, pull all those Stein votes back. But again, it may there may be a point where it's too late, right? If people get really invested emotionally in Stein, then they're not going to come back. This is going to be a very, very delicate decision. Okay, but he needs to be looking not just at his polling numbers, but he needs to be looking at the polling numbers of other people on the left as well. And he has to be cognizant of the reality that... I know he's cognizant of the reality that he's not going to pull everybody over to Clinton. Okay, I know that. He said that as much, and there's every reason to believe him. He knows that. Okay, but he needs to be really cognizant of the reality that what he's saying is not rhetoric. He, he needs to take himself seriously and really look and really pay attention to how these other parties are polling. I, I think that really, I think the Green Party is the only one that's really serious. Um, on the right, you might see something similar come up with the Libertarian Party, which is why I think that Trump needs to run um, uh, a Libertarian as a candidate, um, that's something I'll get to in a few minutes. Um, but but on the left, like he he has to be cognizant of that, and it has to be a part of his decision. If he starts to see the numbers for Stein start to come up a little bit, he has to launch an independent run almost immediately. Because if he doesn't, then he then then the 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 result of Bernie Sanders. Even if he doesn't run as an independent, is in fact going to be that the vote is going to split and Trump will win. In the long run, that might be positive, okay, because that might be the beginning of a third party. And if the Green Party can maintain momentum, and Stein can stick around, maybe get some people in Congress, etc., then that's a, that, then that's a huge start, right? But he has to be aware that it's more likely that he's going to launch something on to really to his left than he's going to deliver these voters to Clinton. And he has to be paying attention to that. And he has to be basing what he does on what's happening to his left. Nobody's going to tell you that, okay? That's why I'm indispensable. Okay, nobody else is going to point this out. Nobody's going to want to analyze it like this. But don't be surprised, okay, when it happens, because it will.